So here is a working mechanism of the chain set. At first, we have our original stack of our resources. And first step, that is we create our chain set. Second, we view our chain set to make the decision if we wish to apply them. If not, we just revert or make some changes again. And that is the last step that we have. That's the fourth step. We execute the change. So you have the original stack. If you wish to make any changes, you create the chain set. So once you have made the chain set, you see that you view that on the console or the viewing page that you have the chain set that you have created. If you're satisfied, you move ahead and execute the chain set. If not, you come back again and you create another chain set or you make additional changes to that. Isn't it? So that's how simple it is. So you have the original stack, you create the chain set, you get your satisfaction <laughs> done once you have created it. If you're fine with that, then just go ahead and execute it. So as it's mentioned here as well, we added the template and make the changes. That is our chain set. Then we save the changes on the S3 bucket by uploading it. And then we use CloudFormation to generate our chain set. And then we view our chain set so that we make the decision if this is a valid change or if we need some more changes. And then using CloudFormation, we execute our chain set and make changes to our environment as per our chain set that we have. So chain set is basically the changes that you want to see in your existing deployment using CloudFormation. But having said all this, it is very important for us to ensure that our templates are secured so that only the right person or the right people can make change to it or can make changes to it. Because if it's a production template, we can't take chances, isn't it? So let's understand how we control access to these templates. So now let's talk about controlling access to CloudFormation using IAM. So what can we do with IAM? Let's understand that. So with IAM, we can control what users can do with AWS CloudFormation. That's a pretty straightforward thing to say, but this is much more complicated than you might think. So we can control access such as whether they can view stack templates or create stacks or delete stacks. And we can also specify some granular permissions as well to which users can actually create Amazon EC2 instances, terminate database instances or update VPCs. Those same permissions are applied anytime they use CloudFormation to do those actions as well. Here, this is interesting because if I restrict an IAM user that it cannot create an EC2 instance, if the same user uses a template that contains a resource creation for EC2, he won't be able to do it or he won't be able to create it because we have restricted the user to certain resources. So if I restrict its IAM policy or the IAM user that he cannot use EC2 or it cannot create an EC2 instance, even if it tries to do that using a cloud formation template, it will not be able to do that. The same way we do it for other resources and templates as well. So let's try and read these policies for IAM. So the first one that we have here is IAM policy view stack permission. So here, we have four actions in our policy for describing stack, stack events, stack resources and resources. So this is just for a user who can view the stack. So if you see, we have the policy. So when you're reading a policy, as I've already told you before, you must specify or you must focus on the statement. So the statement will give you an option to see what is the effect. So the effect will be either allow or deny based on which your actions will be defined. So in the first policy that you see here, we have the action or the effect as allow and the actions are describe stack, describe stack events, stack resource, stack resources. So this user having the resource as star, it means that on all the resources, wherever this action is applicable, they are allowed to do that. So here, so this is just for a user who can view the stack. But what about the users who actually shouldn't be allowed to make changes like deleting or updating? Let's see that IAM policy here. So this IAM policy denies the delete and update stack actions for the my production stack. So here, if you see, we have the policy, the statement here. So the statement effect is deny. So it means that any user who has this policy will be denied action on deleting a stack or updating a stack. They can create a stack, but they cannot delete it or they cannot update it. And what is the resource they are restricted to? That is basically your my production stack. 
and they can perform their operations only on that particular stack itself. So we have a policy here that grants create and view stack actions. So first thing is that you have to notice that is effect that is allow. It means we are allowing the action and what's the action here? So we have these five or six actions like create stack, describe stack, describe stack events, describe stack resources, get template, validate template. And on what resource that we have here, it is marked as star. So it means you are allowed to make changes on all resources which have the action as mentioned above and not to a specified template. So remember when you have star or asterisk in your resource, it means you need to look at the action. And it means you aren't restricted to a particular AWS resource name and you are restricted only to the actions that you're going to perform. So now this is something that is really important and you might have to use this IAM policy. So, so please pay attention to this. So there will be a situation where a team or a pool of users work on a single template and we need to control access to it. So how do we do that? Of course, by using IAM, we can do that. But how? <laughs> so here we need to make use of a condition called CloudFormation Template URL, which takes an Amazon S3 template URL as an input that you want to associate with the policy. So using this condition, we can control which IAM users can manage this template when they create or update stacks. So there is an important point that we need to talk about. So to ensure that IAM users can only create or update stacks with the templates that you uploaded, set the S3 bucket to read only for those users. So that's also a very interesting point here. So we have the allow state for the effect. So the effect uh, is allow for the action that is cloud formation create stack cloud formation update stack so user can create stack and user can also update the stack but it cannot delete it remember that and based on the condition that we have cloud formation colon template url so that is the template url name that we have specified for the s3 so that is https slash s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash test bucket slash test dot template so that is the template name that we are going to use or we are going to restrict so we have mentioned the template url for that so the users can only create an update stack using that template 